Okay, so this is the start of the next project, using the last project. Uh, what we have to do is make saddles for an axle. Now, on a trailer axle, the springs sit on saddles which are welded to the axle itself. And for the saddle, what I need to do is I'm going to drill a 21 30 seconds hole right here for a locator pin to go in. And then on this side, I've got to mill out a half circle. Now this was the part I'm going to explain why I chose to do it this way. So I got this rotary table set up with a vise, and I'm going to stick a half inch end mill in here, and I'm going to you know, just rotate the table through and have it cut this profile right here. Uh, some of the other options, if you have a plasma cutter, quick and dirty. Uh, other option, if you have a three inch hole saw, hey, go at it, that's preferred. Uh, well, I'll show you. I think that this technique will give the hole saw a run for its money in terms of expediency and wear and tear and quality. Uh, so there's hole saw. Now another method would be cut this out with a hole saw to get the bulk of it with an undersize, like say two and a half inch. But then you have to actually cut all this out. And the the two methods that I could think of off the top of my head are using a fly cutter that's just sort of approximately set to a three inch diameter. And the other one would be to use a boring head and use a boring bar uh, to cut that. Now, the boring head and boring bar isn't the stiffest setup in the world. It's interrupted cut, and, uh, you know, it just... It's one of those things I'm not really keen on putting a precision boring head through, you know, this process just to hog out some metal. And I'd have to step it over a bunch of times, because if I went two and a half to go to three, I'd have a quarter inch that I'd have to take out. Uh, you know, same thing, fly cutter. Uh, you know, you could nibble it down with a fly cutter or a boring head set at three inches, but, you know, that's another time, you know, time sink. This method is actually pretty darn fast, and I'll show you. So first we're going to get started by putting uh, a hole for the uh, spring locator pin in each one of these. And this is just 2x2, two 2 three sixteenths wall tubing, and, uh, you know, nothing exotic about that. Now, before I shut the machine down last time I used it, I zeroed out the DRO and I locked the axes down. So, all I have to do is go back to my zero, 00 and I am right in the dead center of that table. So, I'll go to X0. And... Okay. We're X0 right there. So now I'm just going to eyeball the setup on this. Make sure I'm kind of close to the center here. Okay, that looks about center. So I'll just lock the Y axis down. And I'm going to slow this down to about 500 RPM. Throw the oil on it. Right. Make sure this is clamped down tight. Come down here. And this is just a 21 30 seconds drill with a half inch shank. It's a silver and deming uh, held in a half inch collet. Yep, piece of cake. Okay. Okay. We're 125 negative on the Y. I'm going to get my X a little closer here. Okay, reading two tenths on the indicator on X. So, right now, I've got a three inch uh, diameter. Now, if I unlock this table and I rotate this around, like so, get that off, this is going to cut a three inch diameter, or one and a half inch radius right here. But what I did is I took the extra fixed, or I took the, the removable fixed jaw out, or the vice jaw, took that off the fixed end, so that way the piece is offset more. And if I rotate this back the other way, you'll get a sense of what I'm talking about when you look at where the bolt down is. So 
This slot runs down the center of the table. That bolt right there is more or less center of the table. This moving jaw, or movable jaw, is almost right on center line, which means what I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, roughly, uh, well, I'll show you. This is my test piece. So this test piece, this cut right here, was made with that jaw removed. And you can see whenever I cut that, it's going to give me a nice saddle on a 2x2 two two piece of tubing. So, let's get this set up. We'll do a climb cut, and I'm going to raise the table again so that I'm sort of getting a bit more rigidity out of that quill. I'm going to hang the quill out so far. And all you really have to do, uh, well, there's a couple ways that we can approach this, but if I bring that up all the way... That's about good right there. So, I bring this down, sort of eyeball it right here, bring this down. Okay, I lock the quill. That should cut through the other side of the tubing right there, and I'll get a, an entire uh, groove or slot on a three inch diameter. Now, I told you about how fast this was. You might think. inch high speed steel coated rougher. Ruffers make little chips. They seem to use less horsepower too.
one point I was going to convert this rotary table to CNC. I even had all the guts that came out of a Hawes uh, 5C indexer. Yeah, the worm gear and all the stuff where Hawes customized a Yawasa indexer. Okay, so what I'm going to do here as well, I'm just going to do some plunge cutting to try to rough out this material. They can do exactly the same thing on the other side. When I flip it over. Plunge cutting is pretty efficient. Or plunge roughing. line up whenever I flip them over and I go to finish the cut. Now, one might be tempted to turn the spindle speed up and get greedy, but this is high speed steel, not carbide. I'm already uh, getting a rather efficient cut here. having a fan blowing from behind you. Keep it cool, keep the smoke out of your face. got one of these uh, 
adjustable bridge port coil handles. Mine had the original bridge port handle and the handle broke off, so I bought one of these adjustable ones. And these things are so nice. A little trick I figured out is the set screw that's supposed to hold the thing on there, and it's like a pointed grub screw, and there's a hole, and there's two grooves in the uh, on the um, sleeve that the quill handle rides on. There's like you know, 20 or 30 holes that a pin engages, so that way you can you can re-index the handle. Well, that sleeve has two grooves, and you're supposed to use the little set screw, the pointed grub screw, to hold the thing onto the shaft. But the problem is you can't actually tighten that grub screw down. So what I did is I just took the grub screw and I uh, squished it in the vise, in the curved vise between a set of jaws to kind of mangle the threads a little bit, put little you know blunt flats on them, and that acted sort of like a you know deformed thread. To, make it uh, so that the screw would stay at a non-fully seated position just because of the interference of the threads worked really well. Oh, look at that. Well, this is the result of that project. We have here is a couple of saddles. They mount uh, under the axle like this because it's an underslung axle. I test fit them on the axle tubes and they fit perfectly. Uh, on the second one, let's see, I think this is the second one right here. Uh, now this one, this is the second one. Well, anyway, it was a little bit tricky getting those lined up because I realized I didn't center the vise onto the table precisely. So using the vise as a measurement of uh, center and for flipping the parts was kind of a tricky proposition. But anyway, uh, as you can see, these parts are finished. They, uh, they're ready to be mounted on the axle. I don't know that I'll actually have the time to do that before the axle has to leave. So. I just figured I'd show these off and uh, let's see, yeah, that's how they went together. So anyway, that's the project, making uh, axle saddles for a trailer axle, spring saddles for a trailer axle. <laughs>